Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is the trait represented by the colored circles and squares below is inherited as dominant allele. This is not uh, a sex-linked trait. Shaded uh, individuals show the dominant trait. And here is a list of the uh, questions. The first question is what is the probable genotype of each individual and second are there any homozygous dominant individuals in the pedigree above? How do you know? And uh, let's start from uh, genotypes of these two people. Could it be uh, that any one of them would be homozygous dominant? Once again, this is dominant genetic disorder. Any of these uh, two people, in order to show uh, affected phenotype, uh, need just one allele one dominant allele, which would be a uh, defective allele, uh, but also uh, some of them can be homozygous for this trait or may have two dominant alleles. So let's find out, uh, is it possible that any of them or maybe two of them would be homozygous dominant? And uh, we see that they have uh, one child that is affected and one that is not affected. That means that this child here have to get two uh, normal recessive alleles. And that means that each of these parents have to have uh, one recessive allele. So this child, this uh, person, number five, would get one recessive allele from each parent. And this also gives us information that the other uh, allele would be dominant, which cause this genetic disorder. So we know that these two people uh, cannot be homozygous. So none of them can be homozygous. And uh, as for the genotype of this person, this person uh, may have two uh, dominant alleles or may have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So uh, let's put for now one dominant allele and black blank space here. And we can fill this blank space when we analyze the progeny of this couple. Because this person number three shows a normal phenotype, we know that uh, genotype is small a, small a. And once again, we see that one child is affected, that means that he got his defective allele from uh, mother side. And uh, because we know that this person is phenotypically normal, that means this person is also genotypically normal, this person have to have uh, one normal allele. So this uh, person is obligatory uh, heterozygous. And because this person uh, phenotypically normal and from father side this person number seven, this female, uh, may get only recessive allele A. And as for the mother side, if mother would have two dominant alleles, so capital A, capital A, there wouldn't be any choice for this person just to get dominant allele from the mother side. But we see, and in this case, of course, this person would show affected uh, phenotype. But we see that this person's uh, genotype is small a, small a. That means that one of the recessive alleles, uh, this person, number seven, have to get from mother. So mother have to be heterozygous. She cannot be homozygous dominant. And... All people here are not affected, so small a, small a genotype here, small a, small a genotype here, and small a, small a genotype here. So as you see, none of the people are homozygous dominant for this genetic disorder. So we gave an answer to first two questions, and next question, what is the probability uh, of the trait appearing in the offspring if... Uh, seven person number seven would marry person number nine so seven and nine so 
7 and 9 would be cousins and uh, we may say that this is uh, pedigree uh, of the animals or uh, this is pedigree of humans uh, but uh, both uh, in uh, breeding we can make uh, this close relatives as long as uh, in many countries uh, such marriages between uh, cousins would be encouraged for example in Iran uh, and many other countries where uh, it is influenced by the inheritance of the land when uh, cousins would marry uh, they would uh, join the shares of land and uh, land would stay within a family and actually as you see we don't need any even uh, punnett squares genotype of uh, person number seven is small a small a genotype of the person number nine is small a small a so 100 percent of the progeny would be phenotypically normal and now question uh, the last question what is the probability of the trait appearing in the offspring uh, if eight should marry ten so if this male would marry this um, female this time let's uh, draw simple uh, punnett square so genotype of the male would be on the top uh, capital a small a and genotype of female would be here on the side and when we build the punnett square we can say what is the probability for this couple to have affected child uh, regardless of the sex because this is not sex link uh, genetic disorder and as you see according to this uh, punnett square 50 percent of the progeny would be affected with this genetic disorder and uh, another 50 percent would be uh, genotypically and phenotypically normal and uh, this is going to be an answer for the last question that uh, this couple if they would uh, marry or mate would have uh, 50 percent um, chances to have affected progeny or half of the children would be affected and half would be unaffected and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any Please share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.